characters, photo scans, landscapes, and even simulations. All of these can be turned into Lego bricks using one of the new features in Blender 3.4 that lets us access more of our instance attributes. All of this means that we can now make massive Lego scenes without Blender crashing. The first step is getting a model that you want to turn into Lego bricks. I'm going to use this free beach ball model that I got from Sketchfab. I'll put a link to it below. Stick around until after to see some more impressive examples. So let's open up Blender 3.4. Now we can go over to the Geometry Nodes workspace and add a new node tree. And we're going to add a Mesh to Volume node and a Distribute Points in Volume. And you want to make sure that this is set to Grid. Now we can use an instance on points node to turn all of these into cubes. We just need to add a cube node right here and plug that in. So now our cubes are going to be too big, so we need to scale them down right here. And I know the exact number that we need because we have the spacing right here. So we can just set the scale to be the same as the spacing. And we can do that with a value node. I'll set this to 0.3 and plug it in right here and also right here. And now our cubes should fit perfectly, but if you look carefully, you can tell that the inside is filled with cubes also. And that's because of our mesh to volume node, we have it filling the volume. So we can uncheck that, but now we have to determine like how thick we want the walls to be. And that's what these exterior and interior bandwidth options are. Instead of adding space outside, I like to add space on the inside. So we can turn that up right here, but we already have this value option, which I can plug into the interior bandwidth and it should be only one block thick now. If you're noticing some gaps in your model, you can just multiply this with a math node. And I like to multiply it by two. Basically, whatever number you select right here is how many Legos thick your wall will be. So this will be two Legos thick now. It's also a good idea to change the resolution to size and set the voxel size to be the same as this value right here. So it's the same size as our cube. And we can control the resolution of our cubes by making this value bigger or smaller like this. Now I want to replace all of these cubes with Lego bricks, so to model a single brick we have to figure out how big they are. And this is no easy task because the brick size is actually a secret formula that the Lego family has been passing down through the generations. To make this easy with our geometry node setup, I scaled up the dimensions, so just follow my lead. Add a plane, tab into edit mode, and if you want to see the dimensions, you can turn on the edge length right here. S to scale by 0.5, E to extrude by 1.23, I to inset by 0.192, E to extrude by 0.218. At the bottom, inset 0.154 and extrude up just a little bit. At the top right here, select these edges and control B to bevel. Hit C while beveling so they don't overlap and add a few more segments to smooth it out. And last, hit A to select everything and M to merge by distance. This is our Lego brick. I also like to right click shade auto smooth like that and add a bevel modifier. Make the amount a little smaller right here. Set the shading to hardened normals. Now we can name this Lego, hide it, and then reveal our beach ball again. So we can delete this cube right here and drag in our Lego, hook this up. And this is all sideways, so I think our beach ball is rotated. We can just hit Control A and apply the rotation. These aren't perfect cubes, so you can see them overlapping a little bit. And this is pretty easy. All we need to do is bring in a vector math node. We can drop it in right here and set it to multiply and set all of these to one. So I know our Lego brick is one by one meter at the bottom and it's 1.23 meters tall like that. And as soon as we change this, you can see they're all lined up perfectly now. Now when we switch over to rendered view, you can see that our colors are lost, so we have to bring those back. And there is a way to do that with instances now. You can see that the material for this beach ball for some reason is named scene root and that there is just one material. Um, so we can add a set material node in here and set it to that material. And if we take a look in the shading editor, you can see that we just have one image texture right here and that's what's controlling the color. We actually don't need these two so we can just delete these and plug it directly into the base color like that. So in Blender the default UV map is just called UV map and so we're going to get the UV map information from our old mesh and we're going to find out which parts are closest to our new mesh and that's how we're going to transfer it. In previous versions, we'd use the transfer attribute node, but it's a little different in 3.4 now, and we have to use the sample index node and also the sample nearest node. And to get the UV map, we can bring in the named attribute node, 
and this will give us access to any of the attributes that exist in our mesh. You can see we already have the UV map as an option right here, so we can just select that. Now we need to change our sample index to vector so that it matches the color. We can plug that in right here, and we want to plug our original geometry from our group input node into both of these right here. And you can plug the sample nearest into the index right there. Now, if we click on this, you can see that our UV map, it says that it's using uh, face corners as our domain. So we need to change both of these to face corners. Now we can save this attribute right here with a store named attribute node. And we just wanna plug this in down here and we can plug this in to the value right there. Make sure that this is set to vector and you wanna change this from point to instance because you can see right here we're using instances. Now you can name this whatever you want, but I'm just gonna overwrite our UV map by naming it the same thing. You can just call it UV map. And in this case, uh, you know, capitalization does matter. Okay, so nothing is different right now, and that's because we have to change one thing on the shader side. So let's go over to shading. And right now, this is using the UV map, but it's not gonna work right unless we use an attribute node, and we can plug in, you know, whatever you named it. Uh, I named it UV map. You can plug it in, and you have to make sure that you change this type from geometry to instancer. And as soon as you do that, the colors will be transferred. And this will adapt when we change our resolution too. So you could set this to something a little smaller and it will still work just fine. You can also go into edit mode and rotate this around and you can see that all of the Legos will stay sticking straight up like that when you move it in edit mode. If you want these to be angled, you have to move it in object mode like this. Just so you know, one thing that will break this is if your mesh has any openings, if it has any holes. So we could just, you know, select this top one and delete it. And you can see that it kind of breaks because our mesh to volume can't really figure out what's on the inside and what's on the outside. So if you're using a different model and it's not working, make sure that it has no holes. It also gets more complicated when you have multiple materials per model because you basically have to do this for every material. Right now, I don't think there's a quicker way to do it because you can't do a lot of things with materials in geometry nodes. Also, if you're using something that isn't using a UV map, for instance, if you're using a texture that's using uh, object coordinates, you can get that to work with instances by using an object info node and plugging in the location instead of the object coordinate like that. Let's test this out on some other things, but to make this easier to use, let's duplicate our group input and everything that's plugged into here, we can just plug in like that. And this is going to be our resolution. So we can hit N to open up the side panel and we can rename this resolution and we can change it from a vector into a float like that. And we're also gonna wanna change the material right here so we can plug an empty slot in like that. And now over here, we can access those options. I'm using the Sketchfab add-on, and with this, you can search for models and import them without ever leaving Blender. So I found this cool photo scan of this temple right here, and I'm going to import that. And right now, this is really huge, so we should probably scale it down quite a bit. And when it's a good size, we can apply the scale. And this is made up of a few different objects, so I want to merge all of these together. So you can just select all of them and hit Control J and it'll turn it into one object. And we can apply all the transforms here too. Now we can turn this into Legos by giving it a geometry nodes modifier and making sure that it's using the node tree that we just made. So the resolution we have to turn up, I'll turn it up to something like 0.5 and it's already starting to work, but let's make it a little higher res. And we have to change the material to the one that it came with, which is just called matte zero. And we're gonna have to update it in the shader editor also. So the only one that I care about is the base color right here. So we can actually just delete everything else. Just like before, you can bring in an attribute node, set it to UV map, change it to instancer, and plug in the vector, and now the colors should work. So if you turn this up really high, like to 0 0.05, it will start to get a little slower. So if you want it to be more lightweight in the viewport, you can uh, set this to something higher, like 0.4, and we'll go back over to geometry nodes. And we can actually set two different resolutions, one for viewport and one for render. So to do that, search for a node called is viewport, and we'll bring in a switch node. Wanna make sure that this is set to float, and we can plug all of these into the output like that. And we can plug this into the switch, 
So now whenever the viewport is showing, it will use whatever value is true. And when it's rendering, it will use the false value. So true is going to be viewport and false is going to be render. So if you want, you can rename them. So we can set the render to something a little higher, like 0.05, like we had it before. Now I'll just set up a camera and some lights. And when we hit render, you can see that our rendered version is much higher resolution than what we were seeing in our viewport. I don't ask very often, but if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And if you want the file from this video, you can get it on Patreon along with early access videos and coupon codes for free products. I also donate some of the money to environmental causes each month. If you like learning about new Blender features, watch one of these videos next. Have a good one.